Ian Wilson got popped. Deng Wei has retired. Drive went 10 kilos over the world record. And a ridiculous thrower does ridiculous power cleans. Welcome back to the Weightlifting House News Show, the only weightlifting news show in the world. It's been a little while since I've done one of these, and enough stuff has happened that it felt like this was kind of required to consolidate on everything that's happened in the weightlifting world over the last month or so, just so we get back to some level of baseline upon which to move forward. Now, before we get on to probably the most, uh, I don't know, surprising bit of news that Ian Wilson popped, something that I dilly dallied on whether even to touch on, I figured I probably should. I want to mention quickly, coaches only, this time just a one day event, March 20th. We're going to look at the, the secrets of international weightlifting. We're focusing on four international weightlifters with insider knowledge, I suppose, on four typically lesser known systems. Eduard Andruskovic, he is the Latvian head coach, now Saudi Arabian head coach, also coach people like Rebecca Kohar and Rit Vasu Harris. He's going to be sharing with us a sort of overview of the Latvian system, where they drew their inspirations, how it potentially differs from more Soviet traditional style programs. We then have David Kirch, the German head coach. He's going to be talking about that German technical model. How is it that the German athletes look and move so good? Then there's Ciro Ibanez, who's going to be talking about the four different systems uh, that he has coached, starting off with the Cuban methodology. He was then one of the head coaches for Spain, France, and now Canada. And then finally, we have our boy Max Ata talking about the lessons that we can actually take and apply from the Bulgarian system. It's one day of incredible knowledge. It is the greatest thing to ever happen to wait up to coaches, and it's available now at a discount, just $80 for the day. The link is down below. Prices go up soon. So Ian Wilson has been popped, and unless you've been living under a weightlifting-shaped rock, you probably knew this news already. It is surprising. Quick background on Ian. He was the, and still is, the youngest American to ever snatch 100 pounds. He was, that's 137 kilos. He was the youngest American ever to clean a jug, 182 kilos, 400 pounds, uh, and 200 kilos. He has lost those. He also was a senior record holder in the snatch at 173 kilos. Now, he's just been popped for a bunch of compounds, but essentially it was stenozolol and jostanolone. Now, these are the kinds of drugs that you don't take if you're trying to avoid detection, which probably leads us to believe that he didn't knowingly take these. These are contaminants of something else that he knowingly took that he maybe would have been popped for. What I'm not saying is that he didn't take performance enhancing drugs. What I am saying is that I would be surprised if he purposely took these ones over some which were a little bit more covert. So because he admitted to having taken these performance enhancing drugs within the first month of this news coming out, his sentence, which would have been four years, was reduced as his standard protocol down to three years. And having spoken with him, he seems pretty happy to just take those three years on the chin uh, and essentially just retire from the sport, kind of knowing that he was capable of doing the numbers that some of the other international lifters were able to do. It wasn't his fault that he didn't reach those. It was more a circumstantial you happen to be an American, you don't train within one of these systems that uh, offers those advantageous circumstances. I won't mention those systems, we know which they are. So moments after this whole news came out, Ian posted a video for 187 kilo snatch and a 227 kilo clean and jerk, both 13 kilos under the world records, 10 and four kilos respectively over the US records, uh, both done while working a full-time job which is kind of eye-opening as to the um, potency, I guess. I mean, we know how helpful drugs can be, but just seeing it you know, laid out like that, like you've got a full-time clean Ian Wilson back in the day, who was a 173, 215 kind of guy. He then goes full-time job and trains a little bit in the evenings and takes some gear and is able to do 187, 227. Uh, the 200-240 barrier certainly suddenly seems like something that would happen if he was in a different system. Anyway, I think situations like this, once again, they lend themselves to my belief that not all pops are alike. While I agree that basically the punishment ought to be the same, i.e. whether you take nozzle here or in the USA or in Kazakhstan, the ban should be the ban. I totally believe that. But I think the lens through which we look at the athletes in terms of uh, well, emotionally, I suppose, um, it should be based based on, or should be determined based on individual circumstances. 
the country that they're from, the length that they've been involved in the sport, uh, their ability level at the point at which they started taking drugs. All of these, to me, are important factors in how I view the athlete, regardless of the fact that the punishment, the three years or four years, should indeed be the same across the board. What I think to me, and I, I will move on from the story, what I think to me is almost most interesting uh, about this was the reaction from U.S. athletes who, t- or U.S. fans of the sport who would tend to be they tend to not care about supporting athletes who are clearly on drugs, which I think is fine, because if the sport allows the athlete to compete, then you should be able to be a fan of that athlete. If it was another athlete who got popped in the USA, there would be a lot of backlash. But because it was Ian, who has been like, you know, people, he, he's not got a cult following at all. I'm, I'm friends with Ian, just to put it out there, just to the all cards on the table. Uh, he's developed a huge fan base of people over the last decade and a half i guess because of the amount that he's dedicated towards the sport but i've never i could never have predicted how much support he would get for having chosen to do this and compete uh it again it 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 shows how how subjective a matter it is it was kind of interesting i think to see our next piece of news another athlete removed this time not because they were pop but because they officially retired dung way i guess arguably the greatest female weightlifter of all time i think you would maybe struggle to argue that case, but you could. She has the 11th highest female Sinclair ever, uh, undefeated since 2014. I guess that's a pretty good case that you can make. Undefeated since 2014, uh, a competition in which she actually even set a world record in clean jerk. She just didn't win, she took silver, and then she was undefeated for a couple of years prior to that. She's a five-time world champion. She's 2016 Olympic champion. Uh, her best ever Sinclair was it was a 115 snatch, a 147 clean jerk, 262 total. That 147 and 262 are her best clean and jerk and totals ever. Her best snatch is 117, which she did as a 64. She posted something, or in fact, I think she posted something on a Chinese social media platform, which then the squat jerk journalist posted on Instagram for all of us who can get access to that. It translates as follows. This is actually my first time reading this, so I have no idea what she's going to say. 19 years of weightlifting career. There are difficulties, setbacks, grievances, sadness, and regrets, happiness, joy, honor, pride, and harvest. That's a, that's a whole emotional roller coaster there. I'm lucky to have achieved some achievements. That's an understatement. Uh, and I'm honored to be a role model in the eyes of some people. That's absolute. On this day, all, everything will be in the past. No longer an athlete. Walk out of the training ground step off the podium and start a new life journey life is bright everything is lovely the world is worthwhile the future can be yeah okay that's a lovely sentiment you know she's basically admitting that you know her career was uh, potentially quite incredible she went through the whole roller coaster of emotions and she looked forward to stepping out into the world as as a human being rather than just an athlete so um you know dang way you're not watching this Dung way, I should say. It's the correct pronunciation of, of dung. Um, you're not watching this, but thanks. You, you definitely inspired a lot of people. Uh, technically, Dung way was incredible. Hopefully, you've been watching videos of her lifting while you've been listening to me. Uh, so, Dung way, uh, shout out to, to you on behalf of uh, as many weightlifters who are willing to have me speak on their behalf. Let's get into some of the lifts from the last few weeks. I want to start with from Pakistan. We have Talis Ali, the 67 kilo weightlifter, known as being one of the fastest, most impressive in terms of depth that he hits in his lifts. Also as someone who doesn't look like he lifts, which I always appreciate because I don't necessarily look like I lift either. Uh, as a 67, he just hit 140 and then 145 in the snatch. Looked really nice. Uh, obviously still that 155 uh, or 145, 10 kilos under the world record by Huang Minhao, but sick left. Over to Uzbekistan, we now have Olympic champion, world champion, undeniably, in my opinion, the king of the 109s. Where's he going to go? Up, down to supers? Who knows? Uh, with a change in weight categories, we don't know yet. He just hit a 251 kilo jerk out of the rack. This is, is significant for a few reasons. One, it's 10 kilos over the world record clean and jerk held by his teammate, Ruslan Nurudinov. Uh, it's... 14 kilos over his Tokyo winning clean and jerk. It's 13 kilos over his world championships winning clean and jerk. It's also a kilo over Ilya Ilyin's best jerk from the rack that we've seen. And when I spoke to Ilya, which I've done many times, uh, and asked him about his numbers, I'm pretty sure that 250 was actually the most that he ever hit. So this is a kilo over that. Obviously, he's in a category four kilos over the one that Ilya was in. But 
Even so, that's that's still a pretty cool thing to have on your resume. He also hit a 237 kilo clean and jerk uh, in training. I think this is probably just prior to the World Championships, but it was only just recently released. Uh, also recently released, again, I think done prior to the World Championships, was his teammate, the 2016 World Champion, Olympic Champion, Ruslan Rudinov, 235 kilo clean and jerk and a 194 kilo snatch. Over to Romania now, Loredana Toma, 64 kilo weightlifter, who is uh, going to have to go up, I guess, to 71 for the Olympics, now that the 64 kilo category is not a category. She now, by the way, doesn't have to compete against Deng Wei, which is probably the most exciting news uh, she's had in a long time, especially since Romania was banned. That was a pretty bad time, I imagine, for her. Uh, she just hit 120 kilos for the power clean and push press, which is crazy I, 120 kilos not that this is even remotely relevant in many ways 120 is my best ever push press and i weighed 33 kilos probably 34 kilos more than she did when she did hers which is just unreal and i also didn't do it after a power clean i would have probably failed if i had a power cleaned at first so that's insane she also just snatched 114 she did a 190 kilo back squat She's probably going to be the 2024 Olympic champion now that Deng Wei's out of the picture. Uh, with the weight gain up to 71, I could see her being a... God, I could see her being a 120, 144 type lifter by then. I don't think anyone's going to beat that. Across now to Italy, three lifters to mention. The first, quickly, 49 kilo Julia Imperio, 80 kilo hang snatch, uh, 98 kilo clean and jerk. These are not personal records for her. But they are nice lifts and she moves them incredibly well. I wanted to highlight those. 81 kilo Olympic. He took the bronze in the end, didn't he? Because he was going to. He went for the gold rather than the silver, so he took the bronze. Antonio Pizzolato, 250 kilo back squat triple. I presume he's going to move up to the 89 kilo category. He used to be an 85. 89 looks perfect for him if he moves up. He could, re he could easily be a, a 215, 16 kilo clean and jerk in that category. In a, you know, 75 kilo snatcher probably. Uh, and then finally, the 71 kilo Alessia Durante PR snatch, 90 kilos. Over now to France, we have retired weightlifter, but still kind of sick weightlifter, Redon Minouchi, uh, 89, 185 kilo block snatch, which is um, way over the world record, the world standard, because the world record has not been hit. It will get hit because now that people are flocking down from the 96s and up from the 81s into the 89 kilo Olympic category, we're going to start seeing some real talent there. So we'll start seeing some world records. Right now, if I said to you, what is the world standard in the snatch and the clean and jerk for the 89s? I bet you wouldn't know. That's how underrepresented that category is. Team Georgia is back training. Uh, they are in training camp after basically a month off after the world championships to, to rest and, and recover. Totally fair. This training camp should last somewhere around three and a half to four months, basically up until the European Championships, which has now been moved to Albania, uh, which I'm really excited about going to. It's, it's a shame that it's the end of May now rather than April, but that's going to be kind of like May 25th to June 5th, I believe. Last year is building back up. He's done 275 back squat triples, no doubt a load more also. Rezi Davitadze is in a proper preparatory phase, 135 by 5 block snatch. So... We'll see what happens with them. I want to quickly just mention also, over the last few weeks, I've been saying this probably, it's probably almost becoming almost annoying at this point. Weightlifting is going to change in April. Weightlifting for the individual is going to change. And I mean that. We've been working on something that is going to be so overwhelmingly impactful for the sport of weightlifting, for the athletes in weightlifting. Uh, I can't wait for this thing to be released. But if you want to learn more about it, there's a link down below. It's actually just weightliftinghouse.com forward slash secret, forward slash secret, if I can speak properly. You put your email in and we give you updates. We gave one out last week. We're going to give another one out probably today, uh, which means that you might have missed it by the time this goes up. But we're going to release these secrets. I can't wait. I can't wait for it to come out. Uh, I wish I could say more right now. But the way to find out more, if you're as interested uh, in learning about this as the hundreds of you who have signed up to receive information on this, then just put your email in down below and, and you'll be the, the kind of first to know. But uh, it's going to be revolutionary. We are not alone in this project. Um, we have the best of the best working with us. And this thing is going to make, it's going to make your lives. Uh, it's not going to make the lives of the athletes that I'm talking about in the news show that much different. But your lives, the people watching this, who, uh, you know, go to the gym and train. It's going to improve your lives. So, 
I'm hyped. If you couldn't already tell by my stone cold expression, my emotionless face, I am hyped. Okay, let's move on to the USA. CJ Cummings is moving up to 81, I assume. What he's going to do, though, I don't know. I guess he's going to have to come back down for 73 for the Olympics or go up to 89, which would be very exciting to see CJ in full chonk mode. I doubt he's going to do that. Uh, I would have thought he's going to have to come back down to 73, but maybe lying around at 81 for a little while longer. Who knows? He just did 240, then 245, then 250. Hold, front squat, hold, which is significantly harder than the front squat. That's insane. Uh, he also did a 190 kilo clean and jerk, and then potentially the most unreal thing, which I don't think we've actually mentioned yet, except on the podcast I do on the Morning Brew, uh, is the fact that he just did a 202 kilo front squat plus jerk. That is over the world record, by the way. That's over um, Xi Zhiyong's world record. So this is just ridiculous. Next from the USA, I want to highlight Kate Nye. She did a 147 kilo double bodyweight jerk, which is the heaviest jerk she's done at that kind of dropping down to 71 kilo type body weight. It's probably the first double body weight clean and uh, jerk she's also done. She then cleaned 143, which she said was a personal record, which I didn't think it was. Obviously, she's right. She's obviously right. I just really thought that she'd cleaned 145 before, but she obviously hasn't. Otherwise, she wouldn't have said that it was a personal record. But, you know, I'm kind of surprised by that. But huge lift. So shout out to Kate. Uh, over to Venezuela, Kedemar Vayanea, one of my favorite weightlifters in the world, 96. Hopefully dropping down to 89 for the new Olympic category. Uh, I have so much footage from him from the world champs. It's, I need to start releasing it because it's insane. Uh, 290 kilo back squat triple. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any... There's almost no 96s who can do that. Tian can do that. Miso can't do that. Uh, Tashiki could do that, but like he's not competing anywhere near the same level as Tian and Kedemar. So it's insane. He's done a 280 front squat as well. He's just he's got legs for days. Over to Colombia, Lesman Paredes, new snatch world record holder, most exciting snatcher in the world right now. That 187. What did he hit? Suddenly in my mind it was like, did he do 189? But no, of course he didn't. He did 187. Well, he went 182.10, which is a decent training total. It looked pretty easy. Uh, and then he sort of muscle cleaned and strict pressed 125. That 125 is strong. He's, I mean, his upper body is like. Un ungodly muscular it's insane he, he's so yoked it's crazy but 125 strict press as a 96 it's got to be up there with 96 kilo strict presses and then finally from the elite level of lifters i just want to go over now to australia down under kyle bruce 150 kilo block snatch uh which he's an 81 by the way although i think i'm guessing he's moving up to 89 he's got it in his handle now on instagram but he was an 81 at world so he can't be that much over 81 right now. 150 block snatch, 200 kilo clean and jerk attempt. Cleaned it, pulled it out of the bar. Unreal. Got up with it and then, and then missed a jerk. But that's coming soon. So, oh, also to all the Australians out there, uh, we've opened up our store, our fulfillment now in Amazon. So if you need tape and uh, I don't know what else we've got over there right now. Maybe straps, maybe wraps, but certainly tape. As you can see here, we've got the pink, blue, and the black. Uh, that's now going to be delivered like as quick as Amazon deliver things. So that's probably the only way you can get fast tape. So check that out too. Final thing I wanted to mention, not an elite level lifter, but an elite level athlete, Jose Bolivian 97 on Instagram, high hang power clean 190 for a double. Throwers are just built differently. They're just insane. Uh, I think Zach's probably done some videos on this. Uh, I spoke to Emily Campbell on the podcast recently. Check out the new Weightlift House podcast YouTube channel. It's just a video version of the podcast that is currently, you know, goes out every week. She used to be a thrower. We spoke about uh, Mary Tyson Lappin used to be a thrower. Lots of good throwers who move into weightlifting uh, absolutely dominate. And this guy is never going to move into weightlifting, but he probably could. High hang power 190 double is insane. Guys, Coaches Only is now one day secrets of international coaching. We're looking at the Latvian system, the German technical model, the French-Spanish system, the ways... How have I got five hands up when we've got five fingers up when we're doing four talks? I don't know. Uh, Bulgarian transference to modern-day programming. Uh, it's $80 for the full day. There'll be a roundtable discussion with other coaches as well at the end. They are creating these perfectly curated presentations. They speak for basically 45 minutes. You then answer questions for 15 minutes. It's all online via Zoom. Uh, it is the best thing to happen to weightlifting coaches. I'll put a link to that down below. You really should check it out if you want to learn more about international training systems and you are a coach. Um, so, yeah. 
check it out. Guys, appreciate you tuning in, and I'll catch you all on another episode of the Weightlifting House News Show. Yeah.